When would we ever use trans instead of E and Z? Like why? If E and Z are always permissible. If there's two, if there's two stereo centers next to each other, but it's not a double one. Actually, even there, um, actually, stereo centers will be named with R or S, not with E and Z. So the only, so, yeah, for double bonds, it's always safest to use E and Z, because that always so works. Should we just completely forget about cis and trans and replace that in our brains with E and Z? Because well, I always lean towards the trans. How would you name this? Uh, six. Trans. <laughs> yeah. So E and Z only applies to double bonds. It doesn't apply to rings. So this is the one case where you must use cis or trans. Wouldn't you do R and S? Normally you would. You would here. For this molecule, it would be best to say whether this was R or S or whether this was R or S. You wouldn't but trans? No, no, uh, that actually wouldn't like work. It's the same thing? It? You couldn't just say trans there because that doesn't distinguish between these two molecules. There's two different trans molecules. So here, these are different from each other, right? They're enantiomers of each other. So here, you've got to use R and S. Well, wouldn't you be, just be able to say trans um, one, two, dichloro, whatever, and then for the other one, trans one, three, dichloro? Oh. Well, my point is these are both one, three. Oh, uh, the other one was one, two. These are both one, three. So the only correct way to name this is to use R and S naming. You can't just say trans, because that doesn't tell you whether you have this molecule or this molecule. However, this is not a stereocenter, right? This is not a stereocenter, because the path on the left is the same as the path on the right. This is a little bit of a fine point, but this can come up on exams. So this is the one case where, um, there, even though this is not a stereocenter, there's still stereochemistry. OK, so double bonds, easy. Always works. Dashed and wedged, RRS, or cis and trans. Yeah, so let, let's uh, go over that again. A double bond, E and Z is always safe. For a double bond, E and Z is always safe. Cis and trans sometimes works, but sometimes not. So it's best to use E and Z for double bonds. Um, if you have stereocenters, you can only use R and S. If you've got stereocenters, you can only use R and S. So like wedged and dashed, then it Those are usually like stereocenters. a subcategory of stereocenter and not stereocenter. Right, and then there's just this one weird case where even though there's no stereocenters and no double bonds, there's still some interesting stereochemistry that we need to name. Even though, um, even though these are not stereocenters and there's no double bonds, we still need to say that these are on opposite sides of the ring. So here's the one case where the only recourse is to use cis or trans. But this is the only time that you must use cis or trans, something like this. So the only time you must use cis or trans is to name the relationship of substituents around a ring when they're not on stereocenters, which is pretty rare. It's pretty rare that they're not on stereocenters. Usually on a ring, there would be stereocenters, and you would use R or S. OK. But for double bonds, it's safest just to stick with E and Z. Okay. For double bonds, it's safest to stick with E and Z, because that's always acceptable. OK. But th those are all kind of fine points. The most important thing is to just think about E and Z when you see double bonds. That's the hardest thing for students to do. All right. Uh, so here we have the cis or um, the Z over here. Good. Okay, all right, so uh, I think you guys got the aldehyde naming pretty much. Um, 